it's time to add another house to our village world. We've done the farmer, we've done the mason, and we've done the butcher. Which villager profession is gonna be next? Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And welcome to another episode from me, Amamance, in my Villager World series. This is a series where I create custom houses for each of the villager professions, plus some villager professions that don't exist. Watch this space. Put them in a world all together, and then make the world available for download, plus the schematic for each of the individual houses too. It's brilliant. The Discord link is in the description below. All of the details of how you can get this are in the Discord. They're available to my Patreon group and I really hope you're enjoying them. Let's crack on with the next profession. We are gonna go for Cleric. Now the palette that I thought I would go for this particular build is a little bit stony, perhaps almost slightly gothic. We've got stone in different forms and also some dark oak because the dark oak is going to offset with that really beautifully. Plus some internal, relatively meager stuff. Let's crack on. Now I reckon a cleric's house is going to be relatively meager. It's not going to have an awful lot of detail on it. So we're going to build up using some stone primarily. This is six high, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to do a gap of one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go up six again. We're going to do a gap of one, two, three, four, five, and go up six again. We're going to make a rectangle, three, four, five, go up six again. Similarly here. I can't count on those ones, look, that's terrible. And then up six like that. Let's just get those up. And then we're gonna cross beam, if indeed it is called a cross beam when you use stone, all the way across to finish off this rectangle. Because so I think it's not gonna be a very flash house for a cleric. They're more worried about whether or not they're doing the religious -y stuff that they're meant to be doing. So they want a relatively basic house, almost church-like, but not quite. So we're gonna do that exactly. Then I'm gonna get some stone and I'm gonna run stone all the way around the inside of this. You'll notice that we're not indenting it. We are literally doing it in line where we've got that chiseled stone. And I'm gonna bring this up all the way to the top. And there we've basically got a stone box. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna create a hole. First off, I'm gonna just bring a platform out here. This is gonna be the front, and I think we'll bring this out three. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of those two. That works, and I'm gonna rim that around with some stone slab just to match that. That's gonna be where the entrance is, which means we need a door right there. I'm also gonna put a window in there. We're gonna get some windows there, I think. Uh, let's get some windows there uh, and there. That can be a larger one. And um, we can put, let's put a small window in that side there and a four window in there. Yep, I think that works for me. And I'm then gonna bring in dark oak to bring in the floor inside. So we raise the floor up one level from the uh, actual ground itself. And I'm gonna ring this all the way across. It's very dark, it offsets that stone really nicely. And I like the way that that's gonna give a feel internally of it being, again, gothic is the word I think I'm going to use. I reckon that is a decent start. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it up a second level, but I don't want to do it just on one side. It's gonna be the similar size, to kind of this seven by seven box, but I'm gonna bring it in. I just need to decide how far I'm gonna bring it. I think I'm gonna bring it in from there, two, three, four, five, to there, so it's offset slightly. So how many is that? It's in two, and then one, two, three, four, five, and that goes there. And I'm gonna bring this up five total. So one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Have I done that six? I have, and I? Right, let's bring that across five, like I said I would. I think that's gonna to be too big if it's six. Two, three, four, five. Bring that across like that. Two, three, four, five. Bring that across like that, and then connect those dots together perfectly. So that's gonna be the shape of our house. Now, I warn you, this house is probably gonna look a little bit rubbish until it looks good, but in my head, 
this is going to look quite good. What I now want to do is bring in, where's my blue glass? I just want to give myself the necessary accent just to check that this blue glass is the right choice. I think it is. It's not a church, but having a little bit of stained glass, I think, brings across that church feel. So I'm just going to pop them in like this all the way around. And we are also going to be putting in windows at the top, but I'm not entirely sure where yet, so I've not done it yet. I am going to bring in some stone and do exactly the same on these two sides. I'm not going to do it on these insides as yet because I think they're going to be slightly different because that's going to have some internal space. But I will put it on those and we can decide where we put the windows there, as I say, in just a moment. What I am going to do now is I'm going to get some dark oak stairs. I'm going to pop dark oak stair there. I'm going to put stone stair there, upside down stone stair, dark oak stair there, stone stair there, upside down stair there. I'm going to do the same at the other side and then we're going to go at an angle by putting a there and that there and that upside down and then again on this side we're going to go there and there with that upside down, that's not upside down, with that upside down like that. And I think that's how we're going to bring in this. Yeah, that's how we're going to bring this in. What I do think I'm going to do, however, is, yeah, I am going to bring in a little bit of a chimney area here too. So let's bring that out like that. I don't want it to encroach on the windows. So let's pop that like that and make that window just one. So that's where we're going to put a chimney that's going to come up, which is nice. Now what I want to do is what I always tend to do when we've got a really flat surface and that is texture it up just a little bit. So what I'm now going to do, I'm going to texture up this wall and I'm going to put in cobble, I'm going to put in andesite and I'm also going to put in just a little bit of stone brick too to give it a better feel. I'm then going to put stone brick on each of these and on top of that stone brick I'm going to put I'm going to put quite wide legs actually I think that'd work let me crack on with that We made some great progress there, I think, and now I can start to pop out where I want the windows on this level, which is dead easy. It's gonna be there. Let's pop in some glass, and I'm just gonna undercut that with a bit of a windowsill, and I'm probably gonna overcut it as well. I think that works, actually. I'm happy with that. We pop those on there and there, and then continue to put windowsillage on all the windows as we go around. Not like that, that would look ridiculous. And then one of those, and that is that. We'll sort out other window trim in just a minute because I want to go and grab some spruce fence, actually spruce gate, and just pop it there. What that's gonna give is a bit of a support. You know what? I'm gonna get rid of the ones on the end because they don't work, but the ones on the sides do. So let's pop that like that and that like that. And what about the ones on here? I think we'll do the same there, same there, come around this side same there and the same there so that gives a level of support 
for the roofs that I think works quite well. We'll come and add a bit more detail to that in just a minute. I want to go inside now, spin myself around, and I'm going to pop the dark oak door in there. So when we open it up, we've got an indent. That's fabulous. And then we're going to put in a floor. Now, this floor is going to go at this level. So it's actually relatively low to the gables at the ends. And I like the idea of that. So let's just get this in. Brilliant. Now we're going to get ourselves, let's use dark oak planks actually. We're going to come in one, two, three, four or five. Let's go four. We're going to go in four and we're going to create a tower that goes all the way up to and including there. And then I'm going to get some spruce steps and I'm going to start to build a spiral staircase going around. This is a relatively small house, so we've not got a lot of room for staircasing. So what I'm going to do is I'll put that sideways like that, and then like that gives that effect. Put another step there, sideways like that, and like that. Another step there. Okay, and then we come up there, and that goes like that. So theoretically, if I come up and down that spiral staircase, that should work fine. Okay, so now we've got an upstairs and the downstairs. I'm now gonna get some stripped oak and I'm gonna run stripped oak like that. That covers that up. I'm falling down the stairs. I'm gonna come this way. We're gonna put stripped oak in there and that covers that up as well. Now we need to think about how we're gonna cover this area up because we've got basically two arches that look out to the outside. And we're gonna do this in a really simple way. I'm gonna get stone and we're gonna come up with stone on the outsides, come across. Now that covers up that area, but I don't wanna keep it covered up like that. What I think I wanna do, I wonder if we could do something, is that like that? That might work quite nicely. If we go for dark oak stairs, this is a bit of an experiment. That goes there, and that goes there like that. If I then get a spruce trap door, which is a very similar color to the dark oak stairs. Pop that in there like that. Like that. And like that. That makes for quite a nice little effect. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to get myself a chest. Have I got a chest? There's no chest there, goodness me. Let's get myself a chest. We've done enough with the blue glass now. And we'll put a chest in there. That opens. A chest in there that opens up and then I'm going to get spruce trap door all the way along. I'm going to pump that out which means I now need that blue glass back typically there and that goes like that and I'm going to grab a pot and also a lantern I think and we'll get lantern there, lantern there. We'll put a pot shift clicking onto that and shall we go with a lily of the valley in there. That's quite a nice little alcove. Doesn't need to be entered into, which is probably just as well, because you can't actually get into it very well at all anyway. But I'm all right with that. It is just for looking at. We also need to do the same thing over here. What I might do here is something slightly different. So again, where's that? It's gone again. Let's get that out. We can put shift, shift, shift to get three in. Let's punch out another hole. Put in some blue glass. I'm going to get the bed now. I'll put the bed there. And let's pop in a crafting table actually in place of one of those. And then we can grab a shelf on either side of that. We can One of them we can put in a lantern. And the other one we can put in another pot. And let's place in a nice blue flower into that pot there. And then I wonder whether this might be an opportunity to to do this, that, and that, there, and there, there, and there. Also, grab a door, but this time I want a spruce door and come round on the inside and pop in a spruce door that actually makes it for a very nice separation. I like that a lot. We're going to do the same up here with that stripped oak. And that, of course, is where the chimney is. We're not going to put any chimney edge into that side. 
In fact, we could probably punch that out and make that consistent internally, even if it's not consistent externally, because that is facing a big old piece of stone. Okay, so that is a decent start. We're not going to decorate it up anymore just yet, but we will do in a bit. Let's go back downstairs and think about where we're going to put in this fireplace, because it should be pretty much central to here. So that's the fireplace there. That looks great. I'm going to get this in here so that gives the fireplace its edge we're going to pop in some actually not there like that i think that's enough actually for the fire smoke isn't really going to reach it out the top we'll do something about that in just a moment what i do want to do is pop in that like that on the top of those steps which then allows me again to pop in a lantern on one side and a flower pot on the other and on that flower pot we'll put in a red flower so we're starting to bring all of this together now in terms of other decorations we're going to put a run all the way across there coming around this side we're going to put one there i'm going to get a crafting table there and there have i got yes i've got an item frame i'm going to put an item frame shift clicking onto that i'm going to put a lamp there on top of the crafting table I'm going to put a pot on top of that crafting table with nothing in it. And given that this is a cleric, he's probably just having a carrot. That's my guess there. And then we get a stone seat because he's not going to have anything particularly comfortable. Pop a stone seat there. And we've got a little office area for our cleric. I'm just going to grab again that like that. We're also going to pop that in there, that in there, and hang a lantern from those. We'll do the same over here before I forget. That in there, that in there, lantern, lantern. We now are going to get the most important thing for a cleric, and we're going to place a brewing stand there and there. We're going to put in a lantern there, and we're going to put in a flower pot next to that brewing stand there. We're going to leave that bit open. I'm going to pop in a blue flower into that again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to knock these three bits out, take out that dirt, run that with stone, and then I'm going to get a bucket of water. I'm going to place a bucket of water there and a bucket of water there. I'm then going to get my slab, pop it there, pop it there, and we have an infinite water source for them to be able to fill their stuff up. Now all we need to do is start to give this place a little bit of storage using chests there, a chest there. I think that works quite nicely. That's plenty of room for them to be able to store the potion effects. And I think I might put some separation into this room as well, you know. Shall we do that here? Only going across three. Like that. And then what we'll need to do is when we flip those up, we're going to have to fill that area in across there like that. Flip these all up. Get rid of those two. That works nicely. Actually, we're going to have to get rid of that because that won't work. Won't be able to get up. So we've got a little bit of separation there. We've got an opening here anyway. So we can then close that up like that which closes that area up, up quite nicely. I like that very much and keeps this fire going. We're going to get a campfire. We're going to pop that there like that. And I'm going to need a splash water. And I'll throw that splash water on there. And there is the fireplace with the extra wood. Let's pop a flower pot here. This person likes flowers, clearly. But we don't want necessarily to put too much else in. Now we just need to put a little bit more decoration on the front and sides and back of this house and we are pretty much done. Let's crack on.
one finished cleric's house, relatively simple in terms of its build because this is after all a cleric. Internally it's exactly how we showed you before. Upstairs we've added just a little bit of detail with crafting and furnaces and inside the bedroom is like that. And a little bit of detail so as it's not quite so dank. And the cleric I think will enjoy living here very much. Let's get it into our village world. The house is added in just opposite the butchers and a nice big custom oak tree with a little pond there. And I think that's the perfect spot for the cleric's house because it's going to be relatively central with the rest of the buildings that we put in as we build this village around it. That is four of our villager professions already in this Evergrown village. This village is going to become a town by the time we're finished. Next time, we're going to do a different profession and we're going to expand this village even further. Now remember, you can download this world and the schematic, not just for this particular house, but all of the houses that I do in this series. All you need to do is go to the Discord. Discord is in the description below and that will tell you everything you need to know to be able to work out how to get this schematic and this world download available to my Patreon community. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making it. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.